the heat map that we've developed um, uh, is, is really a current state analysis of, uh, of vulnerability, of economic vulnerability of the 25 markets. So it's not a forecast uh, about where they're going. It's really just taking a snapshot of where those economies are today, given the state of the global economy, and extrapolating from that to some extent what the implications are for each of those economies. So what we've done is we've taken a set of seven indicators um, that we believe give us a, 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 good, a good overview or good insight into how vulnerable, economically vulnerable those economies are as of today. Some of the factors that I mentioned, current account deficits, government debt, overall debt, import cover, um, the, 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 the volatility of the currency, um, inflation levels, um, growth in credit uh, as a percentage of GDP. So each, all of those in concerts um, give us a sense of how stable or unstable or how vulnerable or, or, or not the, the, the economy and the financial system within those particular markets are. What it enables us to do, and we just sort of normalize the overall score, and it gives us a range of markets from, you know, let's call them lower risk through moderate risk to higher risk, um, again, uh, from a vulnerability or from an economic vulnerability perspective. What's quite interesting is that the, the Middle Eastern um, economies in general seem to have emerged from the, the, the Arab Spring or, or on the fringes of the Arab Spring as well as the global economic crisis and, and, and stack up really well, perform really well. Um, for us Africans, um, quite interestingly, a market like Nigeria um, uh, is looking pretty strong and healthy from, from an economic vulnerability perspective and is in the, the top, sort of the top group of categories. Um, and a market like, like Korea as well, South Korea, um, it looks, looks pretty healthy. So those, those, those are countries in which you know, current, current account deficit um, is looking fairly, you know, fairly manageable. Debt levels are looking pretty healthy, you know, pretty low, particularly you know, compared to the developed markets, but even within the context of, of these, these emerging markets. And overall, um, if there was a, a significant downturn or some kind of a major shock in the global economy, these are the economies that would probably be able to weather that shock pretty well. There's a group in the middle, um, which includes some of the, the Latin American and East, East, um, the Eastern European countries that are, you know, have, have certain vulnerabilities. Um, and obviously for each market, those vulnerabilities are different. South Africa, we find towards the, the bottom end of the middle group, if I can call it that. So ranked together with the likes of, um, of a Brazil and a Czech Republic. Um, with, um, with sort of moderate but on the cusp of higher risk. And then we've got a group of, of countries, some people are starting to call them the, the Fragile Five, and sometimes including South Africa in that Fragile Five, or, although based on our findings, South Africa is more on the cusp of that group. And that includes the likes of India, um, Argentina, Egypt, Vietnam, Turkey, who, are, you know, who have really suffered in, in terms of um, the, the impact of the threat of a reduction in quantitative easing has had a, a real impact on their currency. They're running high government debt levels, and generally are running a very high um, current account deficit. Ghana falls into that category primarily because of their, their high current account deficit.